Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate every one of you here because you are looking very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Because you belong to the Lord. Everything about the Lord, he has made all things beautiful in his time. Inclusively, you are included in this beautiful thing that is happening in our time. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate our bishop who has given me the opportunity to come and serve in this very high and exalted pulpit. Uh, I'm amazed, but nevertheless, it's called the amazing grace. Daddy, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Very, very grateful. And also hearing uh, something about my promotion right here. I, I think this day is really blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Praise the Lord. The Bible says God rested on the seventh day. And the way he did it was that he blessed that day. He blessed the day. And next, he sanctified the day. That's the way he rested. Because he can't worship himself. And so, this day is blessed. Because we have blessed it also. Can you say amen? And we have hallowed it and sanctified it just to worship and to um, give glory to our Father. And that's why you are here. And that's why I'm here. So is this day blessed? Are you sure it's blessed? And you have hallowed it for the Lord alone? Oh, praise the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. I just want, I know I'm on time. I have to be very careful when I'm here. I want to speak straight on what I call one of the very things of Christ. One of the very things of Christ. Father, give us your word, the entrance of your word, give it us light. The entrance of your word into our soul, body, and spirit, enlighten us and causes the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened of who you are and what you are to us. Lord, give us your word. We've come to hear from you. And what you say, Lord, we promise to hearken unto it, to your praise and glory in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9, verse 41. Mark chapter 9, verse 41. I think God confirmed this message by the cup that they have just given to me. And they have given to some of us a cup. And in Mark chapter 9, verse 41. 41. Please help me. Yeah. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. Who is speaking? Jesus. Whosoever shall give you a cup of water. Who is he speaking to? His disciples. Who, whom he, he has commissioned to be missionaries. Just as he was. Christ is one of the one of the missionaries and the best and the greatest missionaries we've ever, we've ever had on earth. Our father sent him to this world to be a missionary. He came on a mission. Yes or no? And his mission was to save, to look for us who were lost and to save us and to redeem us back and to restore us back to what we are in God. And that he did. And so he said to his disciple, whom he was given the same mission, and he has commissioned them to go and preach this gospel all over the earth. He said, whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ the King. Because you belong to Christ, the king. 
Now look at the very text. Verily. Verily. Wherever you see the word verily in the word of God or mentioned by Christ, it means it's a truth that will never fall to the ground. It's not a fact. In other words, it's just like saying truly, truly. So verily I say unto you, you shall not lose his reward. He shall not lose his reward. What is the very text there? Verily I say unto you, you shall not lose your reward. You shall not lose your dividend. As much as you decided to sh have shares in the kingdom business, you will never lose your dividend. Never. Never. Now let's go to nine before I begin to talk to you what God has laid in my heart for you. 49, verse 49 and 50. <coughs> 49 and 50. For every one of us shall be salted with what? With fire. That's what the anointing will do in us. Resulting us for our generation. Every one of us shall be salted. And every sacrifice that we are going to give to the Lord, even the sacrifice of this service we are having to the Lord, we are giving to the Lord a sacrifice of worship, shall be what? Salted with what? Salt. Wonderful. And verse 50. Salt is good. He has defined what salt is. <laughs> salt is good. So don't ask me what is a salt in this. It's already defined. Salt is what? Good. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt to yourself. Imagine, that's what Jesus is saying. Have salt. Have salt to yourself. And have peace with one another. Can the church say amen? amen. Have salt to yourself. Have salt to yourself. Have the virtue of God. Goodness. Add it to yourself. Add it to your faith. Add to faith, goodness. And to goodness, temperance. God, the Lord himself gave us the counsel. I've told you something, but I want to advise you, it is in your responsibility to add what? Salt. The virtue of goodness. The virtue of good conduct. For taste. Taste good to people. Taste good. Upgrade your personality in Christ. Let goodness be one of the virtue. And that's the virtue of God. That's, that's one of the character of God. Add it to your faith. Let me talk now. By the grace of God, we all belong to a mission or a church that has been commissioned with a mission. And that is why the name of our church is Church of God on a Mission. Is that correct? And since the day that name has been given to us, our Father in the Lord is one of, us, one of the greatest missionaries the world has ever had. As rich friends to men. But to Jesus, Jesus is the greatest. But Papa is one of the greatest missionaries that is recorded on earth. Can we put our hands together? Ah, we saw it. Some of us saw him. Saw him. Great missionary. Sent by God to go into the world and preach the gospel 
and replenish the life of people. Add virtue to them. Restore them back. And he went with that commission. And ever since that time till now, the church is still on mission. Thank God. For that. And we are all part of it. We are also all missionaries. We are also missionaries. But there are some special missionaries who have taken to the job of doing the work of a missionary, both internationally and within this country. And Jesus said unto us that he has anointed us with the Holy Ghost and fire. And because we are anointed, our cup is full and running over. Spilling. He anointed our heads with oil and that fire that is burning in us has caused our cup to run over. There are witnesses to that. Yes, there are witnesses to that. That which is in you, goodness, prosperity, peace that God has given unto you. It's not meant for you alone. That's why it's running over. We used to sing in those days, running over, running over. My cup is full and running. Let me stop there because I'm on time. I want to bring to your notice, maybe you are not aware of it, that your cup is running over. The, the first cup you had was very bad. Jesus took it upon himself, took it, and that was the bitterness, the bitter cup he took on Calvary. And he gave us his cup. He gave us his cup. His cup that is full of goodness. Mercy, prosperity, peace, good health, looking good, it's nice. He gave us that. And he took upon himself our cup that is filled with bitterness. Bitterness, vengeance, horrible one. And gave us this cup by fire. By fire. God is reminding us that that cup that is spilling over is not for you alone. That you are supposed to be a cup bearer to the king. A cup bearer to what? The king. Christ the king. For whatever you do unto these little ones, you are doing it for Christ's sake. Christ the king. So I am a cup bearer to the king. I'm a cup bearer. To, you are a cup bearer to the king. And we are supposed to administer that which is in the cup to one of these little ones. And at the end, we have dividends. We are supposed to partake in the shares that have been offered to you and I to be a part of God's share. Kingdom shares. This one is not the shares we, most of us had shares in those days. And today those shares are useless. We have a heap of it, a heap of them in my house. <laughs> Today, they have no value. But that of Christ, that of Christ, is a very thing. Verily, verily, Christ has said unto you and I that if you dare to stake your neck on these very words, and you know the commandments of God are not grievous. Are they grievous? Are they grievous? Simple to obey to the simple hearted. Or to them who, who have learned of him. Because one of the problems we have, Daddy, is that many have not learned of him. They don't come to studies, so they don't know what to do. They don't know who they are. They don't know of what stuff they are made of. He made us. And he's saying to us, He has made you and I. Is helping hands. He said to one of some of his disciples, "When I sent you out to go and do this business with me, did you lack anything?" What did they say? They said, "No, we lacked nothing because we met 
the hands that you've already prepared for us, who were the feet and the company feet of them that preach the gospel, they are blessed. And this company, in fact, these missionaries are feet. And we who are assisting them, we are God's helping hand. So whatever God has placed in your hands, God is saying, he will not compel you at all. But if you dare, like Daniel, if you dare, like Joseph, if you dare, like Suzanne, if you dare, like Dokas, if you dare, act as a cup bearer for the king, you will never be the reward. Mama, our mama knows what it is to be a cup bearer. <laughs> Isn't it, mama? Yeah, she knows what it is to be a cup bearer. The water is always there, provided for, just for you to serve the king. Sometimes you think you are given to pastors and missionaries, you are given in vain. No! You are not given in vain. You will never lose your reward on earth here and in the kingdom of God, eternal treasure. In the central banks of heaven, you never lose your reward. Because you are laying up treasures in heaven and also on earth. You're going to receive the reward. And you know mama received the reward of being a cup bearer. Put your hands together for mama. <laughs> she had never and will never lose her reward. She served well as a cup bearer. Now, you, you know, some people, you know, pre presently, if you are a cup bearer to do a loo of worry, you will never look for accommodation. Accommodation is strong. You will never look for what to eat in the loose palace where you are. If you are in God's palace, if you enlist yourself as a cup bearer, cup bearer, look for anyone who is thirsty, give him, preach them, teach him, and replenish him. That's what the Bible says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish. Whenever they lack supply, replenish the supply. Whatever they lack, give to them. Make sure the work of your master and my master is always progressive and promoted by you. It's your choice. You may have all God has given to you and spend it for yourself. You are the poorest person on earth. If all you have on earth is just for you. Me, 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 me. And you are drinking all the milk and drinking all the tea and drinking all the water that God has given to you for the body of Christ. You are the poorest man because the poorest man is the man who has billions but poor towards the things of God. Poorest man. But I thank God we don't have such people here in Church of God mission. The Church of God is on a mission. I remember I used to be a missionary field many years ago when Papa came as a missionary, he came to the garage, preached the gospel, and the first place the church had a service was a very, very, if you go there now, it's a greenhouse uh, upstairs opposite Pangrove Gate. I don't know if you know that place. Yeah, very greenhouse. That's where it started. Then Mushesha gave us, gave us a GRA. And from there, we have a prayer center. And this place is no more a missionary field. But we're going to assist as many centers that are missionary centers. That's why you are here. You are Jesus' corpse bearer. Anyone who would dare to have shares. But the kingdom of God, we have the king who is Jesus Christ. And we are supposed to be shareholders. I am. I'm a shareholder. I'm involved. I've staked my life my property, my life, even my children, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren yet unborn, they have all been committed to this commission, this commission that is before us in our time. Praise the Lord. So I've come to let you know that cup of life in your hand, water is life, that cup of life, that you're enjoying life because Christ gave you life, life more abundantly. It's flowing, but when God anointed Jesus, and his cup was full. 
he went all about doing good. Healing the sick, raising the dead. So, what are you doing with your cup? That gift in your cup. That money in your cup that's running over. Full and running over. Sometimes ago, we all lifted it up to the Lord. Fill my cup flow, Lord. I lift it up to thee. Is that not so? Come and quench the thirsty, my soul. Oh, bread of heaven, just fill me till want no more. Fill my cup, Lord, fill it till I want. It has been filled. It's running over. It's filling over. Won't you act as the master? That anywhere you go, you are meant to replenish the place. Don't live it the way you saw it. There are missionaries who are almost giving up. Most missionaries are almost giving up because their children's school fees have not been paid. Some have no water to drink. That is, many years ago, I went with uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Chinu, who went for a mission course in Jos. As we were coming back, I was driving. Me, um, Chinu said, we must branch Akwanga. Akwanga is one of our mission fields. And then we branched there. We called the pastor, he called the pastor. The pastor came on board and we started um, looking at what he was doing. He was just building, building a place for people to come and have shelter to worship God. And as we saw it, oh my God, everything was going on well. And um, I know the voice of my master. He spoke to me, he said, give him a check. Not the one you have in your mind. Give him a check. Ah, check. And I quickly said, because if I don't say it, I may turn it over again <laughs> after some time. So I immediately said, um, the Lord has said I will give you a check. So then it's not you give a check and you can collect it anywhere. You can only collect it at the spot of that bank. And so we came home and I gave the check to the director of missions and said, give it to him. He called him. He came. Listen to what I'm saying, sir, and to every one of us. He came. Collect the shirt. And he told Chin is here. The Chin, God is wonderful. That morning, my wife has already said to me, You say God called you. You say God called you. What kind of God has called you? We are in a place like this, Okwanga, the northern part of this country, where we can buy meat very cheap. We have never used meat to cook. And you say God called you. What kind of God? Isn't it that? Yeah, that's what he told you. But God just used him to say, let's branch Akwanga to prove that lady wrong. And to prove that God has called him to be a missionary. And thank God for the ears that hear the voice of his master. <laughs> he said that day, when he went home, he told the wife, God has done something. So what is it? A check. And I told him, this check, don't use it in this house. But so you eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Is that not what I said? I said, eat it. Don't. You're just wasting your time, all this on this, and you are not eating. Don't flog the horse to death in the race. And he got it. That woman believed God from that moment that God called the husband. Give him a check. There's somebody who's about giving up somewhere. At the time, the river Rhine, Ogula, was a mission field. It's a mission field. Papa said, don't build them. Don't give them, um, don't give them, don't give them bills to pay. Leave them. When they are grown up, they will be able to pay. Then, very small, the pastor, <laughs> the pastor of the church, the pastor was the choir master of the church. He, Ima, Ima was the the man was the choir master of the church, the pastor of the church, and also the Sunday school teacher of the church. Everything was doing. As a missionary there, in the 80s, 1980, 81, 82. I was in Brutu then, pastoring the church in Brutu. But today, today, that's no more a mission field. It's a provincial, no, zonal headquarters. He was supported 
He was supported all the way from Benin. Papa Daosa, our father, who is a true missionary, said, leave them. Then they were young. We have a lot of mission field that is opening up. Even in Wari here, between Wari and Sapple, plenty missionaries sent there. They don't know what to eat the next day. The children's school fees not yet paid, and you have supper. Even clothes, they are no, you have no clothes to wear, and they are saying, where is the God of Papa Idaosa? He lives. He lives. And so the advice from Jesus in verse 40 says, please, add salt to yourself. Add value to yourself. Add value to yourself. Be virtuous. Be a virtuous man. Be a productive Christian. Be a productive Christian. Do something. And it's God cannot force us to go against our will. No, 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 no. He only cannot compel us to go against our will. He makes us only willing to do. This day, he has asked me to say to you that you are his cup bearer. You are his helping hand. He's in need of help. He has sent some people so even in, that he told us when we sat down that the international um, mission field and is in charge of that too. We need dollars. If you have dollars, what are those dollars doing in your account? Get some out. I don't say, I never said you should bring all out. Get some out. As you drop it, surely you are both rich on earth and also rich in the treasures, treasuries of heaven. There's what we call the central banks of heaven. It's a guaranteed trust bank. It's called according to his riches in glory. That's what we call the commonwealth of Israel. Stake yourself. This. That's what Jesus said. Salt in yourself. And your sacrifice that you are going to give today shall be what? Salting. Shall be salting. By fire. It's not the word of God, fire. You are hearing the word of God now. The anointing that daddy is always anointing our head with oil. Every time. It's not in vain. It's for us to have our cup running over. Full and what? Spilling over. So, the counsel from our master is that, please, verse 49, salting yourself. Tell somebody, salting yourself. Add value to yourself. Preserve yourself because the more you give to the Lord, that giving is salting. And what happens is that you are preserved for tomorrow. Nobody will take your seat and nobody will take your place. Always giving, always doing good. Because the Bible says he was anointed. And because he was anointed, he went everywhere doing good. And we are used to it already, giving. It's not, it's not grievous. It's not grievous. To give is not grievous. Simple. Easy. Daddy, you have given me, all right, there's need. I meet the need. Because I know that whatever thing I sow, you have given me a guarantee that you are, I'm saltening myself. I'm saltening myself. I'm adding value to myself. I'm known in heaven as one of the givers to the work of God. That's all I just came to tell you. You are known as God's cup bearer. Church of God mission is a church, not just a Bible church. Bible church, just studying and studying and studying. It's a church that is commissioned for mission until Jesus comes. I thank God. And our daddy here is deep-rooted in that commission. And by that we are all also deep rooted in that commission. We can see the work of God suffering. Never. We can never see. Never. Because we know that we will never lack. Give us never lack. And those who lack never give. There's a man who is always giving and yet not gendering unto poverty but prospering. Can you imagine the same salary we have been paid Government workers, you, you and your colleagues, and you're always giving offering. You're always giving to the Lord, giving to the things of God. 
but never lacking. Is that not so? Because all the venues that the enemy will have robbed you with police cases, accidental cases, burial every week. You know, burial every week is a robber. My grandmother died yesterday, and then the great mother died. The other one died. My uncles, you're always going to bury her. You're spending it in the alternative way. That's not the right way. Stop those burials. Tell them to be alive. Every week, many people are involved in burials. It ought not to be so. You can stop it by giving. Lord, this man is, today, there's one woman, she's been brought to our church, 90 years old, young. The, the, the child is a member of our church. It's an address. Address of power. At the close of this service, they're going to bless that woman. 90 years old. At Docas Rosalind, the mother died at 99 years old. Isn't that good? We can stop all those unnecessary barriers by giving. And the Lord will take care of them. You are a cup bearer. Your accommodation is settled. Your feeding is provided for. Everything about your health is taken care of. Any cup bearer in the house of a king. Nehemiah told the king, but he said, why are you sad? Your countenance is looking somehow. Why are you sad? I'm sad because something is happening in my father's home. Yeah, you are my cup bearer. What do you need? That's how Jesus will ask you, why are you sad? What's wrong with you? I trust you. I'm depending on you. I'm leaning on you. That on earth, you are my ambassador. That's what I'm saying. We are his ambassador. We're taken care of by him. What's wrong with you? Why are you sad? Why are you dumb? Why are you feeling? Looking good is nice. Why are you not looking good? Daddy, something is wrong here. And he said, okay, because you are my cup bearer, I will take it. Even the security needed for that program, the king provided. Told security to go with him. Gave letters to kings to take care of his case. That is how Jesus will take care of us. Until he come, he will not let you down. Add salt to yourself. Have salt to yourself. It's your choice. There are some people who like bitterness. Don't want salt. I want to be crying so that they will always come to me. Sorry, oh, sorry. That's not your portion. As a cup bearer, that's not your portion. As I was listening to the Lord about this, in fact, that's the truth. Mama was projected cup bearer to the archbishop. And she has never and will never lose her room. She's blessed. But that service is unto the Lord, not to the archbishop. Blessed. And I know there's nothing that needs, that Christ needs, that mama is not involved in. She's involved. Every one of us, we're involved. But we need to be involved. This is another occasion. There's another story. That our missionaries, missionaries in the field, they are hungry. And you have three bags of rice. Four bags of rice are bad. I release one. We will take it to the mission field. Praise the Lord. Add salt. Salt is good. So if you ask me to define salt, salt is good for taste. It's good as a medicine to preserve, to protect you from disease. Salt is good. That is why Jesus, when he was anointed by God, went everywhere to him. But if the salt loses its value, you will be like lost wife. And Jesus said, remember what happened to lost wife. Good for nothing. Always looking back, trying to go back. But it turned to a pillar of what? Salt. That will not be your portion. You shall be the salt of this earth. All mission fields shall be salted by you. Say amen. Everything good needed for that field it's going to proceed from you because you are the salt of the earth. And apart from being the salt of the earth, he said you are also the light to the world. And the Gentiles shall come to the light. So be courageous to do something this morning. And I'm assured, he said, our sacrifice this morning shall be what? Salt. If the Lord spies your sacrifice, 
and spice your life. Season. You'll be a seasoned believer. What trust him? That's why in Colossians chapter 4, in verse 6, it says, um, let your word be, be seasoned with grace. With grace. And be salted, you know, be seasoned with salt. That's what he said. You'll be a decent believer, full of virtue, full of glory, because you always sacrifice. You know what uh, Abraham did? After putting his sacrifice down, he had to watch over it, not so to make sure it does not get wrong. But this time, the Lord said he will salt it for you. How many of us would want to give unto the Lord today to make sure that his missionaries, our missionaries on field, are never giving up? Some have given up. One ran away and locked the church and ran away. <laughs> because it couldn't be any longer. And the person who was asked to go and take over, just recently, daddy, last month, last year, I mean, the person who was asked to go and take over, I said, how can he go to a place that was locked off? He cannot go there. And he came to me and said, I told my friend, go, go there. Go there. It's not in my area, but in the missionary. I said, go there. over our church. I said, go there. As I was talking to him, God said, give him 10,000. So I thought it was 10,000 for that time. I said, I was trying to open my mouth to say, okay, go there. I will give you 10,000. He said, for a year. Ah. <laughs> and I was, I opened my mouth to say, 10,000. I will give you, I will give to you. Go. Then later on, I said, it shall be for a whole year. Because I was still dragging for a whole year. Every month. Making sure. He has gone back to that place that somebody has run away from. Because it was dry. You can give, you can replenish a place. You see this church? Each time you come in, you see a replenishment. Don't see it the same way. You should make something good. Replenish. If you meet, some, meet somewhere, change it. Put life into it. Each time you come here, you see that there is a replenishment. Put your hands together. Put your hands together for our daddy. Because God has commanded him to replenish. As you go along in life, replenish. If you have money, buy land, cut the trees down. God has finished making that earth. Go and replenish. Put trees to replenish. Put build goodly houses. That's the will of God for you. Replenish. And so this day we want to replenish the mission field. God has been providing for them. And we are God's agent for replenishment. But the counsel from the Lord is add value to yourself. Don't join those who say, hmm, hmm, every day. Jesus, they don't know Jesus. If they know Jesus, or if they know that they are cup bearers, they won't, they won't. They, so. they have no choice but to follow the way and the path of righteousness. So here are we now. The business is, your sacrifice today is about to be salted. Seasoned one. Don't come here and throw and just throw money. No, no, no. Seasoned one. Add salt to your sacrifice. And your sacrifice shall be salted by the Lord. Can you say amen? I can hear believers. I can hear believers saying amen. If you believe, God will give you rest. I mean rest. True rest. True rest. Some people say, I don't get rest of mind. Need rest. Come to Jesus Act the way you will act, and you have rest. Not only in your mind, in your body, in your soul, you have rest. And then be at peace. Did you hear that? Be at peace. Give peace to everyone. Holiness, peace, holiness, without which you will not see God manifesting that our team in your life. The team is focusing on Christ for productivity. If you want to produce, if you want to be productive this year, please do the needful. And now, there's a place in God. That place is the place of giving. We want to give unto the Lord. Whatever you're doing, you're giving it to the Lord. To the Lord. For my sake. How many of us will want to assist the Lord, not the church, the Lord, not the bishop, 
that we're giving to church. No, we're not giving to church. We're giving to this commission. And the owner of this commission is who? Christ the King. How many of you know that Christ the King? You know him? You know him? So please try to make it known to others by investing in this business of Goyi. Goyi. I want people to come out to gift this Goyi. Goyi. I will start it. I will start it. Because I'm involved. I want to I want to make sure I'm involved in every opportunity that God is giving. So I will start it. I know most of you who are here, you love Jesus. Do you love him? His commandments are not grievous. Simple. And miracles are hidden in his instruction. In his instruction. Take up your bed, rise, and walk. If you refuse to take up your bed, that miracle will not function. Go fill the pot. Fill it. Fill it. If you refuse to fill the pot, the miracle of turning water to wine is not going to take place. Go dip yourself seven times. And if you dip yourself five times, that miracle will not function. So, there's an instruction right now from the Lord. And I know that you, his sheep, hear his voice. He's telling you something, to do something. I may limit you. If I say, I want people to give 10, 10 times, I may limit you. So I don't want to limit you. You want to give more than that? Okay. But according to your ability, Please just come out if you know you want to identify with the Lord and his people on the field. A cup of water. If you are a cup bearer, God's helping hands, just come out. Just come out. God wants to raise you and anoint you with fire and season you for your generation. Can you say amen? You must be seasoned with salt. You shall be preserved. When others are going down, you are not going down. You are going up. When the others are weeping, you are enjoying your camp. Because you are preserved. You are salting. A salt. I have not gone to Israel, but daddy, I learned that there is one place called sea, um, the Sea of Salt. Also, people just jump into that place and they never go down. They are floating. Is it true, daddy? Eh? Is it Dead Sea? It's not a salty sea. Salty. They don't go down. They just fall on the water and they are still suspended. That is how God will suspend you. <laughs> and I heard that many people just go in and they are healed. Just come out. Oh, just come. May my whole life be an expression of your grace. As often as I live, and daily as I live, may my whole life be an expression of your grace. Daily as we live, and as often as we breathe, may my whole life be an expression of your grace. As we shout, have our Father, hello and be. Hello, come, come to the waters. Come to the water. You don't know how valuable water is until you go to the Sahara, until you go to the Eastern area. By now, you ask an Eastern man to give you water, he will say, I'll give you pandadiam and soup. But water, I will give you. Go. <laughs> is that not so? So, you don't think a cup of water is just simple. Go to the uh, Middle East. You will drill and drill far before you get water. When I was in the North, the, the well is so deep. So we used to buy water. Merua, Kazo. A cup of water. As little as a cup of water, but it's very bad. He told the people who were murmuring, say, I came to your house. You never gave me water to wash my feet. You never took care of me. But this woman, this woman, when I came in, washed my feet with her tears and her costly hair. She knew my value. She added value to herself. 